welcome to this lecture 28 of groundwater hydrology. So, in this lecture we will uh, continue the, the incomplete part in the previous lecture that is on uh, seismic refraction method. followed by gravity method and magnetic method. So, these three methods come under surface investigation of uh, ground water. So, then we will move on to subsurface investigation of ground water and in that we will start with uh, geophysical methods and uh, within this the resistivity method. So, these come under subsurface ground water investigation. So, in the previous lecture we saw the, the seismic velocity in unsaturated materials and uh, in uh, this lecture we will continue with uh, so the seismic velocity in saturated materials. So, this is a uh, so, this is under the seismic refraction method and uh, this is taken from the same source that is uh, the American Society of Civil Engineers from 1972. So, here the seismic velocity that is in meters per second on a linear scale. I am sorry, it is on a logarithmic scale 50 100 200, 500 followed by 1000, 2000, 000, then 5000 and uh, this is the horizontal scale and on the vertical scale we represent the different saturated material and in case of saturated material the seismic velocity is more than 1000 meters per second and uh, here. So, this is the for uh, top soil and organic materials. then followed by loose sand so this also will have the same range of uh, seismic velocities then 
greater than 100 and less than 2000 then uh, silt also the same range followed by gravel so we are talking of uh, saturated materials so this is gravel and followed by tilled clay so this uh, compacted till compacted uh, tilled clay it will have a slightly higher uh, so this is tilled compact compacted clay and the, its uh, higher range it exceeds 2000 then followed by sandstone it will have the lower range of velocity in the same this one and it will have the uh, the higher range which is even higher than the that for uh, tilled compacted clay so this is for uh, sandstone and uh, conglomerate so next is shale tillite and argillite it will have a higher uh, this one so this is a uh, shale tillite and argillite so next is limestone and dolomite for which the lower range of velocity is uh, around 2000 meters and per second so this is limestone dolomite and higher range slightly less than 5000 and next is uh, weathered fractured so this is uh, weathered or uh, fractured rocks so in this case the lower range as well as higher range will be much less than this uh, limestone and dolomite so now we will move on to the the seismic velocity its variation of course which you have shown already and uh, you have also seen in the previous uh, this one that uh, seismic reflection is used for uh, greater depths up to 1000 meters and refraction used for uh, smaller depths up to just 100 meters or so so now so there is a an equation for equation relating velocity and uh, porosity so this velocity is denoted by the letter v and porosity is denoted by the letter alpha for consolidated formations with uniform pore distribution that is uh, these pores are uh, small pores 
So, in this case the there is an equation which relates the velocity with porosity that is 1 by v is given by alpha divided by v l plus 1 minus alpha divided by v s. So, this v l is the velocity in liquid saturating the rock and this v s is the velocity of uh, solid rock matrix. So, this is the relationship and uh, here, so this uh, spherical wave which emanates from the shock point from shock point. So, expands outwards and here say for example, for a horizontal two layer case with depth to water table of h and distance from the shock point to the point on at which direct and reflected wave arise simultaneously. So, this distance s which is the distance from the point shock point to the point at which direct and reflected waves arrive at the same time or simultaneously. So, in this case first let us uh, draw the figure and uh, so this is the ground surface and uh, here we have the shock point and uh, the waves expand outwards from the shock point so this is the shock point and uh, so here this is the water table so this is at a distance of h below the ground and here so this is the the time is in uh, Ten milliseconds so this is uh, so this is the time in milliseconds so this is a uh, 
milliseconds so this ms this is ms indicates milliseconds and next it is uh, so this is at a distance of 5 5 and here so this is uh, this represents 10 milliseconds so this curve represents 20 milliseconds and uh, likewise so this represents maybe say 25 milliseconds so in this case so if the this v1 is the velocity of the seismic wave and uh, in the above water table and v2 is the velocity of seismic wave below the water table so so v1 is seismic velocity above water table v2 is seismic velocity below water table So, in that case the depth to water table h is related by the equation s by 2 into under square root v 2 minus v 1 divided by v 2 plus v 1 and obviously, this uh, v 2 the seismic velocity below water table will be higher than the seismic velocity above water table and uh, here in this case if we plot the the distance time graph so this is the distance in meters and then this is the travel time in uh, milliseconds so in this case it will show two distinct velocities one above the water table so this is uh, the velocity v1 and uh, this is the velocity v2 and this v1 and v2 So, this both this velocity lines they intersect at this distance s and uh, here. So, if the intercept of this uh, v 2 velocity curve with this if the with the vertical axis so that is uh, that is t i in that case we can also write one more relationship that is h is equal to t i by 2 into the v 1 v 2 divided by under square root v 2 square minus v 1 square. So, this is another relationship. So, where this T i is the intercept on the vertical axis for the higher velocity line that is the v 2 line which is represents seismic velocity below the the water table. So, and uh, now we will consider there is a a three this is a uh, 
So, this is a horizontal two layered case, one above water table which is at a depth of h, the other one below water table. So, now, we will consider a three layered seismic reflection case scenario. So, in which such that this uh, the velocity through the top layer as well as a second layer as well as a third layer. So, they are uh, the velocities through these layers are uh, gradually increasing and uh, the thickness the layer thicknesses are. Uh, so, this is the top layer velocity seismic velocity this is the middle layer seismic velocity and this is the bottom layer seismic velocity. And uh, so, these uh, each of these layers, so this uh, uh, the thicknesses are h 1, h 2 and h 3. So, the layer thicknesses are so this is a top, middle, bottom. So, this is uh, H 1, H 2 and then H 3. So, in this case, so the So, this H 1 can be computed using the two layer formula. which was discussed few minutes back and this uh, so this h2 so this can be computed as half of uh, ti square and ti i am sorry so this is ti2 that is the intercept on the vertical axis the time intercept on the vertical axis minus 2 h 1 into under square root v 3 square minus v 1 square divided by v 3 into v 1. Multiplied by v 2 v 3 divided by under square root v 3 square minus v 2 square. So, this is the expression for uh, determining the thickness of the middle layer h 2 in terms of the velocities v 1, v 2, v 3 as well as the thickness of the top layer as well as the time intercept. Uh, in this uh, of this uh, this v 2 line I am sorry the v 3 line. So, this T i 2 is the time intercept of uh, v 3 line. So, now, 
So, this is uh, the field procedure for uh, seismic refraction has been considerably simplified. And so, here in this a small charge, a small dynamite charge is placed in a approximately 1 meter deep hand augered hole. which is backfilled, which is filled again so the the time of travel as well as uh, the travel time is recorded. for points 3 to 15 meter apart along the along a line from the shock point, along a line passing through shock point. And here, so the so now let us discuss about the interpretation of the data so this interpretation of the data assumes that the interface is a plane. If interface is not a plane, then there will be a curve a small curve joining the two velocity lines. Instead of a point, so here. the actual presence of the for uh, estimating actual presence of of ground water
supplemental information is required. And uh, so, using this supplemental information regarding uh, unsaturated and saturated zones, so then we can be we can uh, estimate the pre the presence of ground water. So, this uh, seismic refraction, refraction method when applied can rapidly can uh, rapidly eliminate the unfavorable areas for uh, test drilling. So, here right, so this uh, It requires trained personnel for operation and interpretation and data interpretation. Therefore, it is applied commonly to map cross sections of alluvial valleys. to estimate variations in unconfined aquifer thicknesses So, now let us go to the gravity method so in this gravity method the density variations in earth surface indicate geologic structure so this is the principle on which the gravity method is based 
and uh, this gravity method is it is very expensive since uh, difference in water content so below the ground below surface is uh, very small therefore this uh, gravity methods are uh, under special geologic conditions so like uh, large buried valleys the gross configuration of aquifer can be estimated by gravity methods so lastly we'll go to the the last method in this uh, surface groundwater investigation that is the magnetic method so this magnetic method so it enables magnetic fields that is the mapping of magnetic fields so indirect info related to ground water like uh, dikes forming aquifer boundaries has been uh, well has been obtained satisfactorily with magnetic method so this completes the surface investigation of ground water and uh, now we'll move on to the subsurface ground water investigation and uh, we all know that so this uh, subsurface groundwater investigation is the only subs 
only it can provide it means the subsurface groundwater investigation it can provide the detailed information regarding groundwater and uh, here so the subsurface so the subsurface groundwater investigations are carried out by technical personnel on surface operating the equipment which extend below the ground below the surface the equipment as well as its uh, field of application is below the ground and here so we will go to the geophysical method method which is also known as geophysical logging so in this geophysical method so it involves lowering of a sensor or a sensing device in a bore hole and recording the physical parameters which can interpret this ground water quality, quantity and movement. Quantity and movement. So, we will uh, move on to so this geophysical logs can continuously provide info on subsurface conditions which can be correlated
from uh, one well to another and uh, here so this uh, geophysical log for ground water investigation is uh, less sophisticated as compared to the one used for petroleum exploration or oil exploration or investigation. Now, let us consider the geophysical log in unconsolidated rocks and uh, geophysical log in consolidated rocks geophysical log in unconsolidated rocks. And in this case, so this is the, the ground level and uh, this is the borehole and uh, here there are various uh, depth ranges so in this the let us say these are the say 1, maybe 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 6, 1, 8. So, here this uh, 1 indicates uh, medium grain sand, 2 indicates boulder clay, 3 indicates uh, let us say 3 indicates coarse sand and uh, the fourth one indicates fine sand, the fifth one indicates silt, silty fine sand, the sixth one indicates let us say it indicates brown coal, the seventh one let us say indi it indicates clay and the eighth one let us say it indicates a clay silt. And in this case, say this uh, geophysical logs can be uh, 
used for uh, getting the variation of uh, this one say suppose here we are plotting the, the spontaneous potential. And in this case say this is let us say the positive potential is uh, shown on the right side of this vertical line and negative potential is shown on the left side of the vertical line. And in this case the variation of uh, this uh, the potential Suppose this is the variation of the spontaneous potential and then similarly let us uh, say take the resistivity the electrical resistivity and if this electrical resistivity suppose it shows a variation like this. So, this is the variation of the electrical resistivity and then let us say this is the, the variation of this uh, gamma ray. So, this is the gamma ray and uh, Suppose this is the and in this case the, the values increase in this direction whether it is the electrical resistivity or the this one and then the same thing can also be done for uh, this caliper we will discuss each of this uh, separately. And this geophysical log consists of this continuous information from S1. So, based on this, these uh, different these uh, properties, we can interpret the formations as well as the groundwater availability in each of these. So, we will uh, continue in the next lecture on this uh, geophysical investigation. Uh, as well as we will uh, specifically move on to the uh, resistivity investigation or uh, spontaneous potential investigation and so on. Thank you.